So before I go on to the actual presentation, I wanted to invite all of you to take a few moments with me. Um, if possible, close your eyes. If possible, stop all that you're doing if it is safe to do so. And as you close your eyes, try to look around you through the eyes of your mind. The planet, the world, the universe that's around each one of us. What around us can we really control? Can we control the waves of the ocean? Can we control the high tide and the low tides? When they happen, how they happen? Can we make the sun rise when we want? And the sun set when we want? Look at the beautiful colors of the sky as the sky changes from morning to evening. Look at the beautiful colors of the leaves and the flowers in our gardens. Did any of those things we had any control over? In fact, as you reflect a little more, you will realize that everything in the entire universe surrenders all the time to everything else in the universe. The sun surrenders to the moon at the end of the day. The moon surrenders to the sun at the end of the night. Sometimes the sun surrenders to the clouds, the clouds to the winds, the winds to the rocks, the rocks to the water, the water to the earth, and vice versa. Isn't that interesting? I, like many of us, was a control freak. Uh, maybe you all are not. Maybe I was alone. But in my past 21 years of my association with the Brahma Kumaris, learning this profound form of meditation that the Brahma Kumaris teaches, that's called as Raj Yoga Meditation, I've learned a few things. And I wanted to share something which has transformed my life enormously as I transitioned from this whole desire to control everything around me to be able to let go, to be able to surrender. And so uh, what I learned is uh, the dichotomy of control. This is not a new concept. Mm. People have heard about this or talked about this from the uh, ancient Greek, ancient Roman times. There is a whole school of philosophy called as Stoicism that was um, that developed actually from the minds of the great philosophers like Socrates and Zeno and then propagated by again stalwarts like uh, Marcus Aurelius and uh, Epictetus to name a few. And what this dichotomy of control means is that there are things that are in our control and then there are things that are not in our control. I found myself all the time trying to control the things and maybe you all too, you know, try to control things that we can't control. And in the process, we end up losing a lot of our time, money, energy and resources and we have left then we are left with very little we are totally depleted and then we are not able to take care of the things that we actually have control over so what are the things that we have control over and what we don't 
Raj Yoga teaches us that there is an inner world and there's an outer world. So the inner world is made up of our thoughts, feelings, emotions, beliefs, which all shape our attitude. And then there's this external world that we are so familiar with, where there are cars and houses and roads and buildings and mountains and, and streams and oceans and so on and so forth. The, the link between the inner world and the outer world is our attitude. If the attitude is right, then we can master the entire world, our inner world and then the external world. So when we learn the art of putting in our resources, our effort in controlling or making um, changes in things that we can control, then we will be able to actually fix the things that we cannot control. So, you know, this is our inner world, inner attitude that is shaped by so many beautiful things. And all of these things are really in our control. Despite whatever is going on around us, we still have the freedom to choose how we think, how we feel, what emotions we create, what is our attitude then. Let's take a little bit of um, example from our medical field. Um, many of us know what is PTSD. In fact, now everybody knows what is PTSD. So um, PTSD is post-traumatic stress disorder. When um, it was seen that these war veterans were coming home, seeing all the trauma that was happening in, on the war, um, in the war zones, on the war fields, they would have these severe anxiety attacks, severe flashbacks, severe nightmares. And it was seen that a large proportion of these people would end up with PTSD. But they also realized over time that there is a fraction of these people who don't have PTSD or they don't develop PTSD. In fact, you know, it was seen that some people end up with actually not even getting, not affected by it, but actually allowing that to create the substrate for growth. So there is a lot of research happening into trying to understand why some people are more susceptible than others. And if we can try to change those factors that make them more susceptible, then probably we'll be able to help them not develop PTSD. But there's also now research happening on those people who don't develop PTSD as to what they're doing or what attributes they have so that they do not develop PTSD. Similarly, you know, so some of these people end up with actual growth, the spiritual development that happens in many of these people. And there is also um, a research that if you probably remember in this forum, Dr. Kanishta had shared her uh, research on the lived experiences of Brahma Kumari's Raj Yoga, long-term Raj Yoga meditators who developed cancer during their lifetime. And, um, and how for all of them, cancer was not something that broke them. In fact, it helped them grow further. So she coined a term called as post-cancer spiritual growth. So PCSG. And so sometimes you know, for most people, actually, a diagnosis of cancer would be totally devastating. But there are some people who, when they have the right attitude, they are able to take that diagnosis of cancer and create the right substrate for themselves so that they can grow enormously. In fact, I can give you the example of my own dad. He was a, a very intelligent guy, a great guy. He was very smart, very intelligent. Um, he was a philosopher, 
a mathematician, a scientist, I can go on, but he was an atheist. So nothing wrong with that, I'm not judging him, but um, when he had uh, multiple myeloma, when he was diagnosed with that, he turned 180 degrees actually, and um, very soon he started to believe in God. He started to create a practice of meditation. He became extremely spiritual. And in fact, he even tried to learn the Brahma Kumari's Raj Yoga meditation. And a few months before he passed away, I remember one time he, we were sitting um, having coffee and um, he said to me, son, multiple myeloma has been the single best thing that has happened to me in my life. It is profound, actually. So if we can change our attitude from the desire to control, to surrender, then the same circumstances or situations which in general would seem to be unfavorable, negative, can actually help us grow enormously. And similarly, burnout. Uh, who doesn't know burnout, right? In healthcare, we all have been seeing this even before COVID. COVID in a way was a big blow to all of this. We in healthcare have um, been pushed to our limits even before COVID as you all can um, relate to that. And I like this cartoon where this doctor is uh, asking the patient what seems to be the problem, Mrs. Johnson. And the patient says, I feel the way you look. I say the problem is not the patient, the doctor himself. And so again, there was this big research that uh, came out of England a few years back, very interesting, which started off with the title of that paper was one out of every fifth physician. So every fifth physician um, in England, uh, in the NHS system, is developing burnout or has developed burnout. But what about the rest four? Why are they not developing burnout? So instead of focusing on the one out of five who have burnout, the rest four are probably doing something that they haven't developed burnout so far. So can we learn from them can we look at their lives, examine, scrutinize their lives and see what they are doing right that we can incorporate in our lives and we too can not experience burnout. In fact, what has been seen is that, again, the more we try to control, or these doctors, the more they were trying to control what they can't control leaves them with very little energy to be able to fix what they can actually control and therefore they burn out and see if i like this picture here that uh, shows this bulb that is fused and when we are fused then we really can't serve others and so we need to fix the way we think we need to fix the way we feel we need to change our attitude and then there won't be any burnout. Because really speaking, think of it, the world is going to get sicker. Patients are getting more um, sick, but, and we can see it every day in our practice. Um, there are more and more legislations. There's more and more uh, pressure. Uh, money is getting scarce. Research money is also getting scarce. There are going to be more and more problems in the way the healthcare system is evolving and will evolve in the future. I cannot change all of these, neither can you, but what can we change is our attitude. And so when the um, water is neck deep, if we are neck deep in water, just like these cheetahs, what do we do? Try to drain out the river? Do you think we can ever do that? It would be futile to do that. We'll be wasting all our efforts. And so what helps is to learn the strategies to keep ourselves afloat. 
and who is not aware of this great man, Viktor Frankl, um, who was um, captured by the Nazis, who was thrown into one of these um, horrible, most horrific um, situations in one of the concentration camps in Germany, where he saw the most inhuman conditions and he'd survived those. There were many people who couldn't survive. Um, one is, of course, if you are thrown into the gas chamber, then there's nothing you can do. But what helped him throughout <coughs> was his attitude. He realized very quickly that there are things that he cannot change. He cannot change the, the German or the Nazi invasion of all of Europe. He couldn't change the way the Nazis were treating human beings, killing them in, in such brutal ways. But he could change his attitude. He changed what he could change rather than wasting his energy in trying to change what he could not change. And so that is resilience. He talks a lot about resilience in his book, Man's Search for Meaning. And so for a long time, I always thought that resilience is the ability to push back, to fight back. But only recently I have realized deeply that resilience really means the power to surrender. Just like this small sapling, it never tries to fight with the rock. It finds the crack and then comes out and creates a new tree. So can I also learn this beautiful art of surrendering? Even in Bhagavad Gita, yeah, there is this wonderful um, shlok. Some of you may have heard this before. Karmane vadikaraste ma faleshu kadachan ma karm falhe turbur ma te sangasta karmani what does that mean? That we do not have control over the fruit of action. And so let us not get attached to that. Keep doing the best action we can. And of course, we should also not get attached to inaction. And when we keep doing what we can do, and that is our action in the best possible way, then we are actually able to outperform ourselves. Most of the times, in fact, invariably, we get stuck at the outcome. The outcome is not in our control. And the more we get stuck in the outcome that is not in the con our control, the less we'll be able to do our actions properly. And so the worse will be the outcome actually. So yeah, I feel compelled to share with you um, a little bit of, from the Kung Fu Panda trilogy since this is being Facebook live streamed, I can't show the videos clips, but um, there are two very beautiful um, parts of the, the trilogy, which I want to share with all of you. One was when the protagonist, uh, Po, uh, is having a conversation with his instructor, his teacher, Master Shipu. So, um, and Master Shipu is trying to tell him about inner peace that he needs to learn the art of developing inner peace. And so um, he shares, you know, many different ways of finding inner peace. And then he says that, Po, the day you were chosen as a dragon warrior was by far the worst day, the most horrible day of my life. And Po doesn't like it, you know, naturally, who likes to hear these kind of things as he's listening to it, you know, you can see his face changing, getting upset. But then Master Shipu says, but the day I realized that the problem was not you, but within me, I was able to find inner peace and was able to harness the flow of the universe. So the more we keep trying to change things around us, which are impossible to change, the way people treat us, the way people talk to us, the way people behave with us, the more miserable we'll be. And the day we realize that if I fix myself, what is in my control, then I can experience inner peace and allow the energy of the universe to flow through me. 
and then at the end in the part three of um, the trilogy panda talks to shen you know after the fight and he defeats shen and then he um, shen is still um, not able to forgive and so po is giving him a little bit of you know motivation to be able to forgive and let go and he says the only thing that matters is what you choose to be now past cannot be controlled by us what happened happened there is no human being on this planet who has ever been able to go into the past and fix it the future is what it will be there is no human being on this planet or it or never will be who has gone into the future to be able to fix it beforehand what we can do is to work on the present that's what we can control and the more we stay in the present the more we fix the present which is totally in our control the more we can then erase the past or fix the follies of the past and create a beautiful future for ourselves and i'll be remiss if i don't talk about quantum physics my favorite topic and so what we have realized from quantum physics point of view that at the core of all matter there is no matter there is really nothing but what that nothing does is it creates uncertainty but only when there is uncertainty can there be possibilities so at the core of all matter that is the quantum field there are infinite possibilities so similarly the ability to surrender takes you to that nothingness and in fact therefore it takes you into the quantum field where you are presented with infinite possibilities that you can be whoever or whatever you want to be you become a master of your life and your circumstances and so we have to learn the art of surrender we have to learn how to stop trying to control what we can't control and just allow things to be i'm again emphasizing it doesn't mean that you don't do anything that you don't make effort in fact our very fixation in trying to control things around us don't allow us to do the best we can in this moment so we have to learn the art of surrendering that's it thank you